Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at three signings Arsenal need to make in the summer. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you are new, but also come check us out on Twitch. We're streaming every day throughout the Euro, so come over and get involved. Anyway, let's get this party started. During Mikel Arteta's time as Arsenal manager, whilst it may seem the Gunners have regressed, there's definitely signs of improvement under the Spaniard, as he seems to have figured out who he can and can't trust within the squad. So today we're going to look at three very gettable players who can improve Arsenal in the summer. Arteta seems to have settled on a 4-2-3-1, and there are areas of the squad that are showing promise. Kieran Tierney, Thomas Partey and Gabriel have been signings that Arteta can build around, whilst William Saliba has again showed his potential potential whilst on loan. Nicolas Pepe showed signs of his Lille form at the back end of the season, whilst the integration of Emile Smith-Rowe and Bakayo Saka saw Arsenal play their best football. This leaves four positions to fill, right back, central midfield, a forward and a goalkeeper. But with reports Arsenal set to sign Andre Onana, we aren't going to touch on that because that's probably the best thing the Gunners could do. So let's start right back. A great addition to Arteta setter will be Riddle Baku. The Wolfsburg man just won the under 21 Euros with Germany, and I'd describe him as a complete wingback. The German is technically excellent and has played in a variety of positions across his career, starting in central midfield before settling on the right hand side, both as a winger and as a fullback. The experience of multiple positions means he'd be suited to both an inverted role and a traditional one, depending on what Arteta settles on moving forward. He's a very well rounded player that does the simple things right, but there's room to grow. Despite being 23 years old, he's yet to make 100 professional appearances, so he could be described as a little bit of a late bloomer. Baku is very energetic and would adapt well to life in the Premier League. Not only did he top the Bundesliga charts last season for sprints and intensive runs, but he made 13% more sprints and 5.1% more intensive runs than the next best player. This energy not only allows him to maraud up and down the flank as you'd expect from an attacking fullback, but it makes him a very good presser. He's a very smart defender that's very alive to situation and often recovers possession through interceptions rather than tackles, which is usual for a Bundesliga player. Combine Baku's intelligence with his pace and work rate and you get a very good presser. Take his assist against Frankfurt, so in possession. He's pressed by Gerhardt, the attacking midfielder. He tries to escape and plays a slack pass that Baku collects and quickly releases Veghorst, whose deflected shot beats the goalkeeper. This really highlights Baku's alertness as he's very ready to jump onto the Frankfurt defender. Then when the pass is under hit, he makes over 20 yards to get there first before quickly passing it to Veghorst, who's right-footed and won't break away from the defender. So he can finish with a stronger foot first time, a really underrated pass from the German. The technical ability he shows in this pass isn't a one-off either. If anything, it's a strength to his game. When he's attacking, he's got the technique to slip in advanced players with through balls or even play clever passes like an attacking midfielder. Whilst he's also got the physique to hit the byline and send in good crosses. He can improve his decision-making in these situations but that will come with more game time and coaching. Riddle Baku would be an excellent addition to the Arsenal first team. Not only would he fix the problem at right back, giving Arteta two versatile fullbacks, but Baku could also fill in on the right flank, operating as a classic winger who will help out defensively. He also has genuine attacking talent, take his goal against Frankfurt. Arnold in possession, he passes it to Veghorst, who finds Baku. Baku shifts it onto his right foot and bends it into the far post with his left. This is a wonder goal from the German, and if you didn't know who the player was, you'd expect him to be a world-class left-footed forward, not an under-21 fullback. Before his move to Wolfsburg in the summer, Bayern Munich were interested in, but opted for Bernard Saar, so there's definitely a player in there. Next up, central midfield. It's clear that Arsenal needs someone with a bit of guile in the centre of the park to make things happen, and this kind of player could form an excellent partnership with Thomas Partey. Someone Arsenal have identified as an option is Andalex Samba Laconga. We've recently done a video over on the Clips channel, overviewing what he's like as a player. But go check it out. In short, Laconga is a bit of a halfback that drops in between the centre-backs in possession and screens them out of it. He does look for line-breaking passes when they're on, but he's quite safe in possession, which is not necessarily a bad thing for Arsenal, given the clangers that Granit Xhaka would have dropped. He's the brightest talent coming out of Belgium right now and has captained 
and elect on occasion and at just 21 could be a future star. But if you want to see more live breakdowns of players as transfer rumours break, come over to Twitch where we're streaming every single day at 11am over on the Statman Dave Twitch channel. We've already done a few videos detailing central midfielders for Arsenal, but let's try and talk about someone new, Marcel Sabitza. The Austrian would be the perfect kind of player for this role. Not only is he technically excellent with an eye for goal, but he works extremely hard for the team and is tactically super intelligent. Svitza isn't a flashy playmaker, but he makes things happen, and exactly the kind of versatile player that Arteta needs in his squad. During Julian Nagelsmann's two years at RB Leipzig, Svitza has gone from almost leaving the club to being his star performer. In fact, only Upa Meccano, who moved to Bayern Munich out of Nagelsmann, played more minutes under the German than Svitza. Being able to play week in, week out at a consistently high level would be crucial to building a relationship with Thomas Partey. But in terms of footballing ability, Sabitzer would massively improve Arsenal's possession game. He's a very composed player with the ball at his feet and is always happy to receive. Sabitzer doesn't panic when he's pressed, instead he looks to either play around the press or switch it with a long pass. Being a former winger, Sabitzer operates well from half spaces. From this position, he's got the range to split the defence with a through ball, ping long diagonals or send in dangerous crosses. He's also a considerable threat from range, good off both feet, so the opposition can't afford to let him get a shot away. This means that if a defender steps out to close down the shot, they'll open up space that Sabitza can exploit. This kind of creativity has been sorely lacking from the Arsenal midfield and Sabitza would fix this. Don't get me wrong, Sabitza won't be putting out Kevin De Bruyne or Bruno Fernandes levels of creativity, but he'd improve Arsenal's defensive midfield without compromising the defensive structure. The Austrian is a super hard worker and a very good presser. Whilst he doesn't take too many players on, he's surprisingly quick. His worth, ethic, pace and energy sees him get around the pitch well, and his intelligence allows him to press the ball whilst using his cover shadow to block passes behind him. With his contract expiring just 12 months, Sabitza can be available for just 15 million quid. At 27 years old, he'd bring creativity, pressing, intensity, forward thinking and leadership to Arsenal's squad for half of what they paid for Lucas Torreira. And finally, a forward option. While some of Arsenal's key performance have been in these positions, reinforcements up front could spark a bit of healthy competition and re invigorate Aubameyang. Veghorst would offer something very different as a target man, but I think Domenico Barabi would be a smart signing, directly involved in 24 Serie A goals last season. Left-footed Barabi has largely played on the right wing as an inside forward, but he's also played through the middle. Whilst on the surface he looks kind of similar player to Nicolas Pepe, Barabi tends to get more involved in general play than Pepe. We've also seen Pepe do well from the left-hand side under Arteta, and the arrival of Barabi could see this becoming his main position, or one of the pair could play through the middle. If not, then Arsenal would have two genuine game-changing right-wingers that they could build a system around. Berardi is almost a complete package. At 26 years old, the Italian has developed into a well-rounded attacker with the ability to score both goals, set up teammates and get involved in possession. When Sassuolo looking to build attacks, Berardi holds the width on the right-hand side. From this position, he does drop as a passing option, as he looks to quicken his side's attacking tempo, usually with a first time pass inside. He's a very precise player, and he usually picks out his target with his passes and shots. Take his assist against Fiorentina. Tolian in possession, he plays it wide to Berardi, who goes inside to the striker. He gets the return pass before coming inside and slipping in Traore to finish. This goal sums up Berardi's guile. Before he receives, Fiorentina in control, but a quick one-two around the corner opens up their shape before he finishes the move with a perfectly weighted pass. For a wide forward who scores so many goals, Berardi is still very creative. He's excellent in 1v1 situations. Most defenders expect him to work onto his left foot. It's very difficult to stop. His trademark is receiving wide before making a diagonal run inside before wrapping a shot with his left foot. That being said, when he's out wide, he's not afraid to change it up and hit the byline and cross low. From a standing start, he's quite manageable, but if he's allowed to build momentum, like when carrying on a counter-attack, Berardi is very difficult to stop. With his close control, eye for a pass, and composure in front of the goal make him a very dangerous weapon. Berardi would be a great addition to Arteta's Arsenal, more of a playmaker than any of Arsenal's current forwards. The Italian could help with Arsenal's creative problems and allow Smith-Rowe to continue at number 10 and link the attack. 
Compared to Arsenal players last season, Berardi ranks first for final third touches, shots taken, passes into the final third, chances created, and would have ranked second for tackles plus interceptions and through balls. Simply put, Domenico Berardi would breathe a lot of life into Arsenal's attacking lineup and could replace Pierre Emerick Aubameyang's goals if he struggles again. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Who would you sign for Arsenal? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new. Come over to Twitch and check us out over there. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?